to the ring first Entrance. is our best of breed Anatolian Shepherd Dog. This is the Anatolian Shepherd Dog called Kai. Followed by the Australian Cattle Dog. And here's the Australian Cattle Dog. Now we have the Australian Shepherd. And the Australian Shepherd. Popular with the crowd. Always popular. Good and here is dogs. our best of breed, Bearded Collie. And another one that's always popular, the Bearded Collie. Now we have the Beauceron. Dog most people would not be familiar with, the Beauceron. And, and the, the first of our Belgian Shepherds, the Belgian Shepherd Gronendal. And this is the Gronendal, the uh, first of the Belgian Shepherd dogs to come in. Now we have the Belgian Shepherd Lacanoir. And the Lacanoir here, there are only two here today. The, Very small in The entry. rarest of the by varieties. The Belgian Shepherd Malinois. The One. Belgian Shepherd Malinois, the third variety of Belgian Shepherd. And now the Belgian Shepherd Tavouran. And Tavur. the gold coated Tavouran, the fourth of the varieties. Here we have our best of breed, Border Collie. Now, so you that get a big cheer, the Border Collie. Huge entry today, two judges. Followed by the Briard. The Briard, this has come all the way from America to win. Followed by the Catalan Sheepdog. The Catalan Sheepdog came all the way from rugby. <laughs> now we have the Rough Collie. There the familiar rough collie with its long wedge-shaped head. And now the smooth collie. And its lesser coated variety, the smooth collie. And a very nice moving one too, coming in. Your best of breed, Estrella Mountain Dog. The Estrella Mountain Dog. Portugal. And here we have the Finnish Lapund. And the first of our spits, this is the Finnish Lapund. Now we have the German Shepherd Dog. And here's the German Shepherd Dog coming in. And now we have the Hungarian Puli, best of breed. This braided coat on the Hungarian Puli. Here we have the best of breed Commodore. Oh yes, something in larger size, the Commodore. <laughs> Change colour as well. <laughs> Followed by the Lancashire Healer. Little one now, the Lancashire Healer. Perhaps a forerunner originally of the Corgis. Now we have the Maremma. And here from Italy, the Maremma. Looking very impressive. That white is so beautiful. Followed by the Norwegian Boohund. The Norwegian Boohund. The home dog, home guarding dog of Norway. And the old English sheep dog. Well, he's the. Uh, this is a very smart looking old English sheep dog and coming in with very good movement. Here we have the Polish lowland sheep dog, best of breed. Polish lowland sheep dog now. His name is Hero. And now the Pyrenean mountain dog. Now for something with elegance, the Pyrenean Mountain Dog. And again, lovely carriage and the, the tail carriage. Sheepdog, long hair. Well, and here's the Pyrenean Sheepdog. Often used to work the flocks with the um, Pyrenean as the guard, the Pyrenean Mountain Dog as the Here guard we have dog. Here ah. best of breed. Well, and one of Mr. Oldham's breeds, the Samoyed. And now the Shetland Sheepdog. Ah, the light movement of the Shetland Sheepdog. Another one with a big entry today. Followed by the Swedish Valhund. The Swedish, Swedish Valhund, yes. <laughs> Goes back to Viking times. Now we have the Turkish Kangal Dog. There weren't so many of these here No, today. Turkish Kangal Dog's a guard dog from... Uh, 
turkey. Now we have our cardigan Welsh corgi. First of the two corgis, this is the Welsh corgi, corgi cardigan version. And our Pembroke Welsh corgi. Followed by the Pembroke. And finally, representing the imported register this evening, we have the White Swiss Shepherd. Now, oh, so let's exciting. say the first one and I've seen. Like the White Swiss Shepherd. And Graham Hill. Thank you, Jenny. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's my pleasure together with so my now colleague, Rodney Graham Hill, to come and Oldham take will take a look talk. along the whole line. Take his time, and a really good look at everything he's going to be judging and getting his hands on. This is the first time you've seen all of these together, and it gives him a good first impression of the quality of the dogs he's looking at. All of them will be wonderful winners, but some will have more favour in his eyes than other. <coughs> Pastel group is made up of breeds related to the farming of sheep or cattle. Outline of the dog and its proportions are usually the first indicators that the type is correct. Herding dogs have been used since the very early days. You judge regularly, Frank, and have judged many, many years. How near to your final result do you get on your first walk? Well, some that usually, well, one hopes that some take the eye immediately, and then you hope that when you're going to examine them, that there's uh, no disappointments. Yes, exactly, yeah. and that they move well. A lovely picture of the old English sheepdog, and uh, Rodney's got a lot of experience in that breed. Beautiful Pyrenean mountain dog. Dogs are used to herd and well, these two groups tonight, the working and the pastoral, really are marvellous. The pastoral group is made up of flock herders and flock guards that uh, helping the shepherds and stockmen to herd their, herd their livestock and guard their livestock. So now we have the first... characteristics. And then move them all out. So here we have the first, the Anatolian Shepherd dog, Azalet Emin. And uh, the Anatolian tall dog, Mastiff type. This male, the largest measure as much as 32 inches. There's a big dog. The Anatolian no, Shepherd dog. Just uh, taking a bit of exception to uh, being handled by the judge. They are wary of strangers. Uh, they, were, they were kept as flock guards, very independent in their nature. Well, they're known for this sort of faithful well, devotion. Well, they they were wary of strangers and they were there to keep, uh, to keep off uh, marauders, both human and animals, like wolves, a descendant from mastiff breeds. Uh, he's rather blotted his copybook there. Um, and it's from these that the Anatolian shepherd dog descends. You see our best of breed, Anatolian Shepherd Dog. Six, One of the eight, tallest six, seven, breeds in the group. Much prized by shepherds in native Turkey. They used to live out so all year. Today by Sue well, now we have the Australian Cattle Dog. Medium-sized dog, greatly prized in Australia for his working ability. He's used to control the movement of cattle in virtually all environments. He's also known as the Australian Healer. Breed's ancestors include the dingo. This the th this one is a is a blue speckle. They come in blue speckle and red speckle, which defines the colour of the coat. They have to be hardy, athletic, and strong. And they were healer dogs. They used to nip at the heels of cattle to drive them on. They're also we have the, the English version coming up later with the Lancashire healer, which does exactly the same or did exactly the same job. A name derived from the manner in which he manoeuvres cattle to move them along. Very sharp guard dogs in the farmyard. This, so you wouldn't go into a farmyard where one of these was uh, guarding. I'll tell you, they're so quick. not without strong boots. They're, they're so quick. Yes. Made by 160 Australian shepherds. And here's the Australian shepherd. Um, Although it carries the name Australian, it was developed in America, taken there by uh, emigrants from uh, Australia to America. Yes, Basque Shepherds, wasn't it, who 
originally would have had these Sorry. dogs emigrating to Australia, and, and then uh, they came back with them when they uh, yeah. and the Americans took them over. Again, they've be not only are they still fit for function, but they've become great show dogs all over the world because they've got wonderful athletic movements and a touch of glamour with this coat. They're fairly square in outline, sturdy bone, a wedge-shaped head, and should really cover the ground economically. And this one, coming from just down the road, at uh, Solihull with the... Uh, the dog struggled with them and became popular with an ever-increasing number of admirers. Sorry, this, is a, this comes from Hungary. Americans then named the breed Australian Shepherd. And here we see our best of breed Australian Shepherd, 7025. There were uh, immediately recognizable here, the Bearded Collie. Talking about big entries in some of these breeds, 273 of them here today. There's mention of a breed resembling the Bearded Collie in Scottish records dating back to around the 16th century. He's been known in Scotland and Northern England for herding sheep. It's thought that they go back, as we say, to the Polish Lowland Sheepdogs, which came into Scotland, but then it was the Scottish Collie which was developed with them to produce this. Although they carry this long coat, they should have some daylight underneath them. They shouldn't be overcoated, it's a protective coat. And underneath that coat, they're quite a lean dog. Not heavy in the body, but over rib cage. The beard is a strong a head and muzzle, and again, like all of the working sheepdogs, they will drop their head to be a little bit lower and stealthy the on the move. Always nice to see the movement of the coat as they move, it's so nice. That's the best of breed, bearded collie, number 7255. And the next dog to be seen is the Beauceron. From an entry of 35 dogs, judge. Jeff Luskett selected this male. So there are 31 of these Beaucerons here today, a breed developed from the sheepdogs of the French plains of Beauce, Beauce and Sene, yes, a quiet and confident breed Beauce. valued as a loyal French. companion and guard dog. And known as the Bar Rouge in uh, France, the red, red stockings. And uh, they thought that they, um, as a livestock herder they resemble the... Um, the briard in some, in some forms with their double dew claws on the back legs, which we see there. Rectangular in build, a good, good cattle drover. This is a dog requiring plenty of exercise. If you think it looks lovely, make sure that if you were considering one, you know that you're going to have to give it an awful lot of exercise. But very versatile. Little crochet hook to its tail. This one a black and tan. The barrels, the red stockings. Here's our best breed, Beauceron, 7377. And the next dog to be seen by Judge Rodney Oldham is the first of the Belgian Shepherd dog varieties, the Grenandar. These were judged today. First of four Belgian Shepherd dogs. This is the Grenandar. This is called Marco. They say he's a dog in a million. Takes everything in his stride, loves everyone and everything. Most importantly, he's a spoilt family pet. The Belgian Shepherd dog here in the United Kingdom is shown in four varieties. The Belgian Shepherd dog has four varieties. This is the first. All the varieties take the, their names from the regions in which they were developed. The Gronadal comes in this black coloration. The rest of the standards are the same. They're the same fairly light build, wedge-shaped, delicate chiseling in the head to give them this look of refinement. Quite square in their outline and brisk in their movement. Sharply pricked ears. In Highly intelligent, dogs, sensitive breed. Back to the Middle Ages. Uh, and the Belgian Shepherd dog is an active breed, both physically very alert and in their stance. Exercise and lots of things to keep him busy. That's the best of breed, Grenadal number 738. Marco is his name. The Belgian Shepherd dog, like Noir. And now this is the. Next variety we look at, it's the Lacanois, which is the rarest, only two here today. His name, pet name is Puzzle. To represent the breed here in the pastoral group. Same anatomy under the coat. It's a double coat, wiry in texture, with a little bit of eyebrow and moustache to uh, give it character. Looking around alertly there. 
takes its name from the, 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 uh, the Chateau de Laken uh, near Antwerp, which was the royal residence of Queen Mary Henriette, whose favourite variety was the Lacanoir. Still a rarity, though, in this country, my word. Just two in the competition today. And something of a rarity in its native Belgium as well. It's the, um, the physical characteristics of the Belgian shepherd of the varieties. Similar to the neighbouring rough haired Dutch the, shepherd. The, the breed has been used in, by the, the police force and the army and the armed forces. Like Noir, as seven, four, double four. And this is the one which is uh, most popular with the police force, the Malinois. It's a dense coat, fawn with black overlay. It's a highly intelligent and needs a job of work to keep it uh, fulfilled mentally. It's come here today from uh, Finland. An intense working dog is the description given by the owner. Uh, this is a dog that uh, is very popular with the police, taking over to a certain extent from German Shepherds in the work that they do, the several Malinois. In fact, we've seen them in the uh, police dog display here uh, in this one, ring this week. And this one looking very well and moving well. That brisk gait, it doesn't have a long stride, it's a fairly sharp but clean stride. The Belgian Shepherd Dog Turbrum was another Belgian Shepherd Dog variety judged today by Patricia Gaffey. Last one of the group, this is the Turburen. And uh, this one actually is, is described by the owner, uh, Sandra Smith and Linda Lester, as being a bit of a dumb blonde, but very loving. Lives as a family pet, likes nothing more than sleeping on the couch. Well, that sounds like a dog to me. And is the variety most rapidly increasing. It is a beautiful colour, the... the um, the fawn and gold of the Tavuran, sometimes with a black overlay. This is a beautiful body shape. It's almost square in its body. Again, this delicacy in the head. Some width of chest, they want some heart and lung room, although they're fairly narrow in front. They're essentially very graceful dogs, these uh, Belgian shepherds. A look of a quality about the head. Brisk, alert. A dry dog, there's no zero. excess skin or wrinkle or flesh on them. They're a, what we call a dry dog. Another popular breed with the numerically largest entry today. In the Unmistakable group, here, the Border Collie. 260, uh, beg your pardon, 330 of them here today. This one is a lovable rogue at home, and he's uh, owned by Dave and Murray Connolly and Judith Gregory. They judged. Two judges for the breed today, one to do the dogs, one to do the bitches. Here, this is the male, which uh, won in a Meg Purnell Carpenter, the dog judge. Beautiful example of the breed, and carries a whole list of titles from all around the world, and bred in the Tonkery Kennel of, um, this is Gregory from Cheshire. His Hugely is versatile breed, he is loyal and faithful by nature. one man and his dog, obedience, agility, the herding dog, and again look at the dog the dropping its head on the move, that's a typical stealthy movement. Yes, they work very silently too, don't they, responding to any signal. Zena awarded best of breed to this male, number 7888. Our yeah. judge now looking at the Briard, the French herding breed from the province of Brie, where the cheese comes from. So uh, this one has come all the way from America to win today. They come in black and fawn, and one of the breed peculiarities is the double dew claws on the back leg, which is thought gives them some grip for turning. They also have a tail which has a little sort of crochet-type hook at the end. A guard and herding dog. This is only the uh, second Briard to be both a UK and an American champion. Owners say he's a very kind, caring dog. Loves his family. Very large dog. Takes some feeding as well as dual road to guard against predators as well as a sheep herder. The original 
function of the dog. Striding out very well. Excellent carriage. The, the coat should be quite dry and hard to the touch. There was an entry of 21 dogs. making This is the Catalan Sheepdog. Bit of a cheeky boy, this one. He hails from the Andorra region of Spain, originally bred for herding and guarding flocks. More recently found to be a very good companion dog as he's very loyal and intelligent. This is a rustic breed. Judge just feeling the coat, it's a protective coat. They're a sturdy dog underneath the coat. Strong head, quite compact in the body, and again the same little hook in the tail. Great herder, it's agile, and a very nice straight parallel movement coming towards us. Rough Collies was another numerically strong pastoral breed here at Trust 2019. 227 20, of these Rough Collies here today. And this one apparently has a very sweet nature, loves his ball, very easy to live with. As best to breed and to come forward into the group ring. And the Collie is characterized by this long wedge shaped head, this lovely arm and eye and expression. Alert with its ears. The breed is thought to have evolved from dogs brought originally to Scotland by the Romans and then mated with, li with native types. But I think uh, there are certain differences as individual breeders selected stock for future breeding yes. that have changed over the years, but it's very typical. This one is a, is a female, a bitch. Um, you see the femininity in its smaller size. The, the, it should be an upstanding breed. The, the collie should stand with an impassive dignity about it and light on its feet. There's the rough collie bitch. Now Rodney Oldham moves to the smooth collie cousin of the previous rough collie. They were judged today by Zena Thorne Andrews. And here's the undressed version. This is the smooth collie. The obvious difference between the breeds, as you've seen, the rough and smooth coat, the, co the coat length. <laughs> Eager for its little bit of bait there, but a very nice outline. Look at the lovely neck, the clean head, the semi erect ears. And good length of leg. This is a bitch also. It's uh, more leg and size than the. Rough we've just seen, a very clean mover. This one's come from uh, Holland. The colour range, the same as the uh, rough collies, essentially. This one a tricolour. It's a pity these are on the the endangered breeds, the vulnerable vulnerable native breed, which means less than 300 registered. Last year there were much fewer than that registered. It's a great pity because they're such a workmanlike dog, very little grooming and great companions. And we're looking here at the Estrella Mountain Dog. The Estrella mountain range is in the central part of Portugal, and the Estrella is the Portuguese relation of the flock guarding dogs that can be found anywhere, really, from Asia halfway across the world to the shores of the Atlantic. Again, they're hardy, they come in fawn and brindle, often with a black mask, as we see here. And one of the breed peculiarities is this little rose ear, little turned back ear. Well, the breed standard certainly isn't joking when it describes the dog as sturdy and well-built. He's made on a very generous scale, and that goes for his nature as well. And we also see the little hook in its tail. It's another breed which has that little crochet-type hook. And the next dog we see to be judged, this is the Finnish Lapland. Mrs. Patricia Pat, The Finnish Lapland now being examined. The uh, reindeer herder, but... Uh, Native eight, three, Finland, one, eight, a dog. now one of the national dogs of the country Finland, and was a great household origin, dog, but was Finland, bred for reindeer and later for cattle. It's a spitz type, which means it's spitz means sharp point. The sharp points of its wedge-shaped head 
and its ears. These spitz breeds are always brisk in their action, with a, a plumed tail carried over the back. And this has all of those spitz characteristics. Well, the Lapland really is a survivor. It would have to be in order to cope with life in the harsh climate of Lapland. That's the best of breed winning Finnish Lapland. Number 8318. And now Rodney Oldman examines the well known and very popular of all the pastoral breeds. So, this, of course, German is the German Shepherd dog, arguably the most popular breed worldwide. Breed the Shepherd, as he's known to most people, provides fiercer loyalties and enthusiast tarts than virtually any other breed. This one apparently has an outstanding temperament, fun loving, and loyal. And we know of the versatility of the German Shepherd dog, not only as a, a, a herding dog, but for the armed forces, highly intelligent, trainable. Now we mentioned the braids of the coat when he came into the ring. This is a Hungarian Puli, and uh, this is a dog, five and a half years old. He's called Diesel. You can't mistake him, but uh, the, the casual observer may look a little askance to decide which way he's actually facing. But that's the head, that's end. The, the judge just looking in its mouth. One of the hallmarks of the um, the pooly is the pigmentation in its mouth, dark pigmentation in the mouth. It's what I call one of the Rastafarians of the dog world. <laughs> Underneath those cords, it's a, a fairly lightly built dog. Coat. It's um, it wiry in purpose. its bone, uh, lightly built. These cords develop with time. So the puppy coat is loose flocks, which gradually weather. develop into these cords. The, the origins of the breed are a bit obscure, though, aren't they? Much of Hungary's culture derives from the Far East, and as the Magyars moved westwards into Hungary, they brought with them many things, including dogs. So there are many who see a likeness here between the Puli and the Tibetan Terrier. See, see the, 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 um, the cords form a sort of umbrella over their eyes. That's to guard them from the sun and from snow. It said that they, um, they used to be clipped with the sheep. They didn't carry all these excessive cords when they were working dogs. It would hinder them. They were used to be clipped at the same time as the sheep. So uh, they were, it's the show world which has developed the cords and kept them longer. But they should not impede the movement. The Commodore is another breed which hails. It's interesting that these corded dogs they both uh, come from uh, Hungary. This is the Commodore. As a guarding dog for herds and flocks on the farms, a dog not really to be trifled with. This one was best of breed here in Crufts last year. It's a happy show off, he's called Parkus. First mentioned by name in 1544. Okay, something a little larger than the Pooley, and uh, different. The other one was the Pooley, is a, an agile herding dog, so nimble it could skip over the backs of sheep. This one was a camouflage dog and a guard dog. So, same colour as the sheep often, corded. It could no, give a marauding wolf a nasty shock if that rose up out of the flock. The so, very sturdy, independent, uh, only a commodore. is not so much having a dog, but altering your way of life. <laughs> it's not a dog that demands so. a great deal of food and has an easygoing attitude to exercise. And I'm told that when you buff a dog ready for the show, a common door, it takes about two days to dry out. <laughs> that soon, now yes. Now we come to our home and shores and see one of the breeds of British origin. This is the Lancashire Healer. So we have a little table dog here. We've got the Lancashire Healer. As the origins are not clearly defined, but it's been suggested when cattle were herded from Wales by corgis to slaughter in the Ormskirk area, the Welsh Healer met a Manchester Terrier. This is the result. To be sold at market in the Ormskirk A wonderful little breed. Hardy, workmanlike, great characters, long lived, and uh, wonderful characters in the home. We see it has characteristics of both of its ancestors. It's low to ground, like the corgi. It's used as a healer, which means it nips at the heels of cattle. It's got the low to groundness of the corgi, the coloration of the Manchester Terrier. Here, the black and tan. It also comes in liver and tan. This one is the more popular color. And we'll see on the front legs little black thumb marks, which comes from the ancestry of the Manchester Terrier. 
That's the best of breed, Lancashire Healer, number 8592. Nice to see a, a dog that's going to be cleaned nice and easily with a chamois leather, isn't it? And, uh, but it's a, a dense, <laughs> weatherproof coat and a <laughs> lovely alert expression. Well, His name's Ben, he's five years old and he's very cute. Number 8612. This is the Marema Sheepdog, known as Albi, still used in Italy to guard the flocks, property of the shepherds, named after the plains of Marema, which have been used for centuries as grazing land. This one took the eye when it came in, beautiful dark pigmentation of the lips, the nose and the eye rims, which give it this classic expression. These were flock guards and were adaptable to herding as well, light on its feet with its size, lithe and athletic. Yes. If I'm not mistaken, this one owned by Roberto Pelotti has uh, appeared on the show earlier today. Uh, I believe there was a feature going to be done on him. There were 35 Norwegian Bufuns on show at Crufts today for specialist judge Celia Vine. And this is the Norwegian Buhund. Comes obviously, as the name suggests, from Norway, one of the earliest known Nordic herding dogs. Not recognised officially till the turn of the 20th century. Boo in Norwegian means homestead, so this is the dog found on the homestead or farm. And as a hunter companion. And uh, just look at, looking a little bit unsettled, herder, the handler dog, showing the dentition to the judge. They are an alert and sensitive Norwegian breed. Boomers, they go, but their history goes space, back to the Vikings. And, it, and uh, it, skeletons which resemble the shape of this dog have been found in Viking graves. It's thought they were highly Norway. prized by the their masters. The no, he's only a young Nordic dog, this 22 dogs. months. Out but coat, uh, close didn't like being handled by the judge much. A very nice top line. They are fairly lightly Two built, good length of leg, wedge-shaped head, spitz characteristics, and this high set tail carried over the back, and that weatherproof coat with some density to it. Now he's settled and looks the part. And this is the typical colour, isn't it, really? This uh, does come basic wheat. And does come in, in, in black as well, and they can have some white markings around, a white collar around them. This Dr. is the Anne most frequently seen the colour. For old English sheepdogs today. And from an entry of 130... No mistaking this one, the old, <coughs> part, the old English sheepdog. The old English sheepdog, this dog breed is registered as British originally, but its actual industry is thought to be from the European shepherd dogs of the Alchaka and the Bergamasco types. The old English sheepdog is regarded as a native British breed. Was often affectionately known as strong head, this crisp blue coat with white markings. Underneath that coat, there's a big rib cage. Top line has a slight rise over the loin. Weather resistant. And does not Good length of neck, the judge just feeling the texture of the coat. The old English sheepdog is it's actually a German, uh, come from Germany today, this dog. And a very nice outline, it's short and square with a good length of neck. Just checking the width of the skull and foreface, the handler brushing back the hair, to, and off we go. Now these as puppies are really boisterous, lovable little things, but they don't half grow. Of course, the breed was made popular by an advertising campaign in the 60s. Uh, however, the breed has now dropped out of fashion. It's a high maintenance breed. If you want to keep them in coat like this, there's a lot of grooming involved. However, clipped off, they make fun loving household family companions. 119 of them were here today. It's a well. wonderful entry. Well, this is a Polish lowland sheep dog. Name here is Hero. It's best in shows and all breeds uh, championship shows. Been group four at Crufts last year. The Polish lowland sheep dog. Um, Something like the, board, the bearded collie in miniature. It's a fairly compact dog, strong skull and foreface. Again, it's longer top coat. 
and other native long-coated herding dogs of Poland. Its low head carriage when it moves is typical of the breed. But this dog from Central Europe, from the, sort of, has a long history, it drives from the Hungarian Puli and the long-coated herding dogs of Poland. And so what do they expect? The breed is often born tailless, as we see here. This is a natural tailless dog here. Lively, self-controlled. Apparently very fond of children, these uh, Polish lowlands, so a good... Nice playmate for children. Very stable temperament. Now, here we have the Pyrenean mountain dog. This impressed me a lot when it came in. It's a beautiful, beautiful head and expression. That dark, white, dark pigmentation. Good length of leg. They, they were a guarding dog in the Pyrenees. White so they had to be That's agile, so Europe. not too much substance. We see strong bone there, lovely feet, a beautiful head. And of course they have double dew claws on the back legs, which we can see there. And one of the... should be light on its feet. The head, it said, of a brown bear, the lovely head shape of a bear. Now, when it's really alert, the tail will come right up over the back, and what's called making the wheel. Fair la goule, as they say in France. However, this, is, this has gone beautifully there. This one's come actually here from Sweden today we to take part. To another breed originating in the from 2018 Swedish champion. Sheepdog Longhead. The breed had an entry of 20 and this is the Pyrenean Sheepdog. Long-haired version. Best of breed is this bitch. This is called Hera. She's a two-year-old bitch. A truly courageous working breed. Origins in the rural community and selects large, selected to herd large flocks of sheep for as long as his master needs him to do so. We see the alertness of this one, just lifting its ears for the judge. It said that they should look windswept, windswept and rustic, lightly built, this one very typical in those qualities. They would, they would, work, they would work as herding the flocks and the Pyrenean, the Pyrenean Pyrenean mountain dog, which we've just seen, would be the guard of the. Yeah. They work together, these two P Pyrenean breeds. That is the Pyrenean sheep dog. Apparently, this is a little dog that loves to show off, very cheeky. It's a great sense of humour. And moving swiftly on, we now come to see the Samoyed. Now, one of the breeds of our judge today, the Samoyed. This one's pet name is Charlie. And uh, these dogs are known as the equivalent of the Laughing Cavalier. <laughs> Beams on all and sundry. The face just appears to smile the whole time, from ear to ear. Huge entry today, and this, um, this six-year-old bitch has topped the lot. It's come from Lisbon in Portugal. There should be moderate length of leg, moderate length of back, and this alertness in the head and expression, with beautiful dark pigmentation. The coat is has a silver tipped quality to it. It doesn't have to be completely white. It may have slight biscuit markings in the coat. Top dog in Portugal, this one, in 2018. Covering the ground well. It's a, not a big one. It's, it's a, obviously very feminine. Seen that in the size. And a mature yeah, dog, so six years old, not quite into the veteran Shetland. class, but looking very happy there. There was an entry, a total entry of 235 dogs, which needed... Well, this is the Sheltie, the Shetland Sheepdog. There were 235 of these here, and this was the best of those. It's called Howie, top Sheltie in 2018. Best of breed was this dog, number 9 The elegance of the... Shetland Sheepdog, this a clean, wedge-shaped head, lovely almond-shaped eyes, which give it the soft, dreamy expression which the breeders look for. But underneath that uh, elegance, the there is a working ability, should be fit for function. 
Shetland. The Shetland Isles were noted for their small breeds of livestock. They have uh, the Shetland Sheepdog, the smaller version. It was once shown as a miniature collie in the early dog shows. So small sheepdog, small ponies. And it's thought that the, there was a smaller breed of sheep in the Shetland Isles. That's interesting. Yeah. They're light and easy on the move and carrying itself nicely. The tail carried down may raise a little, but uh, not above the level of the back. Nice expression from the almond-shaped eyes. Karen Gilliland was Sensitive the ears. Of Swedish here at 2019. And from the 47 Valhuns entered. And this is the Swedish Valhund, 47 of them here today. And this import to Britain may look unusually like an unusually coloured Welsh corgi, but it's nothing of the sort. Fairly long in the back, stands up on strong, thick legs. This one's called Loki. The Swedish cattle dog. This breed is similar to the Pembroke Welsh corgi. Goes back to the 18th century. However, it almost died out at the start of the 20th century, and uh, uh, Swedish Count Jean von Rosen travelled round Sweden to find survivors in the remote valleys to get some breeding stock together to keep it the breed alive and revive it, and he's done that. Sturdily built, the harness markings over its shoulder, those lighter colorations, are called harness markings, typical for the breed. Swedish as you said, Frank, it's a, known as also the Swedish cattle dog, so it's a healer in the same way as the, the corgis and Lancashire yes. healer were. Now see the Turkish Kangal dog, judged today by Ben Reynolds Frost. There was an entry of seven. The Turkish the Kangal, Kangal dog, dog. yes. Another flock guard from Turkey the here, recently classified the separately the from the Anatolian Turkey, shepherd with which it used to be classified. The Turkish Kangal dog is a tall dog and comes only in this coloration of fawn with a black mask. Strong and sturdily built. It's a tall dog, this. The largest males can be as much as 32 inches high. And they're real heavyweight when they weigh in as well. Now these dogs would have always lived a, a nomadic lifestyle and would live outside all the year long, so hardy they are, devoted to their owners, rather aloof of strangers. That was the best of breed Turkish Kangal dog, number 9291. Distinguishing feature, that black mask, and the, next breed the dark the mask on his face. Karen Hewitt was the breed judge today. And the first of our two corgis, the Welsh the corgi cardigan variety. From an entry of 106 cardigan Welsh corgis. This is the top and winner for the last few years. One of the... Some authorities say that this breed arrived in Great Britain with the Celts over 3,000 years ago. This one are brindled. It's uh, thought to be no the older of the corgi. two corgi varieties. Sturdy, and used to be known as the yard dog because the length dog. of the body Although from tip of nose to tip of tail was to be 40 inches which is the measurement of a welsh yard so it was known as the the welsh yard dog foxy in its head and expression the the front legs are rather bowed and like the pembroke the garden is thought to be the older breed of the two varieties of welsh corgi with the, the colors are interesting the cardigan allows for also known as the more colors dog than the Pembroke, yeah. but it does permit yeah. any yeah. colour so long as, it's, uh, 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 as uh, white does not predominate. And this is a this is a brindle. They also come in merle and sable and white. This comes from the top winning kennel, but it's a younger dog here, winning today. We see there's slightly bowed front coming towards us. This is the Pembroke Welsh Corgi. Uh, the second of our corgis here, the Welsh Corgi Pembroke. 114 of them judged here today. Best it's fair to say that life would never be dull with a Pembroke. His prick ears and lovely sharp face, they do give him the impression and appearance of being interested in everything that's happening. And this is the top winner in the breed, and now the breed record holder, having won more cc's than any other Pembroke Corgi. 
it's 55 cc's. Well, I mean, that's then, just remarkable, isn't it? Of our queen. This wedge-shaped head, fairly large ears which are rounded at the tips. These have a straight bar, front legs, stature, should have ground claims, although they're low to ground and for nipping at the heels of as a farm. cattle, they should have some He's ground clearance as well. Should have a level, to the level top line. That's the best of breed. Pembroke Welsh Corgi number He's got a good enough four, bark one, to uh, not need to nip the heels or the ankles of the sheep no, when he's herding, the cattle when he's herding. Super little fellas there. The white, Swiss, the white Swiss Shepherd. Well, this is the last well, in the group, and this is the White Swiss Shepherd Dog. The first one I've seen. European winner, 2018. And this is a breed which has just come into this country and been recognised. It's the first time it's uh, been shown at Crufts, and I think it will become very popular. And movement of the German Shepherd Dog. Currently seen in the show ring. Again, it's perhaps reminiscent of the German Shepherds we did see in the in the sixties. However, white was not a colour which was approved by the German standard. The breed, as it is now, is developed in America and then brought back to Europe. Hugely popular. This soundness on the move. Wonderful temperament and they have great working ability as well. But they're really caught on as a show dog. And it's interesting that this is on the import That's register. And, uh, dogs like the Bergamasco, the Hungarian Kuvash, and uh, the Hungarian Pumi, they were all involved, and the White Swiss came out on top. So now it's up to our judge to have a walk along the line and eventually make his final selection. There were 2,896 pastoral dogs entered here at Crufts today. The highest number of breeds represented across. And the breeds attracting the highest entry with the border collies. And the judge full of concentration, looking round from the centre of the ring to, to think which are the ones I want to shortlist here from this very big group. Shortly we'll start to have a shortlist. This is a group that's growing every year, isn't it, this one? Goes to the and he's line. bringing out, is he? No, I thought he was going to the Anatolian, but he's bringing past. In comes the Australian, Australian Shepherd. Shepherd. The Tavuran and the Tavurin. Border Collie comes forward. The Border Collie. A long walk down to his next choice, and who is it going to be? It's the Marema Sheep Sheepdog. Dog. Yes, yes, very lovely. nice. Yes. It did look splendid, didn't it? And the Polish Lowland Sheepdog. Polish Lowland Sheepdog. Oh, walking past the... A long walk, this Savoid comes out. And the Shetland, Shetland Sheepdog. Sheepdog. A very happy Shetland Sheepdog. And the Pembroke Corgi gets the call in. That concludes our short and list. that's the short list. Again, as I other best of breed here at the yeah. Pastor Group Leader Line, can I ask you to show your congratulations and appreciation for their success here at Crafts 2019. So our short list is Pastor Now, best of breeds move to the back of the line. Judge, and I'm sure concentrating. Rodney Oldham will move each again. Balancing up dog against dog, which one's closest to perfection for its breed. Yes, it's a good point to make, isn't it, Frank, of how the judge actually judges so many different breeds. And looking at the border collie there, and now the Marema sheep dog well, really looked splendid. It did show beautifully. Enforcing his opinions on each of these. Great day for them. The Polish the Lowland, the, the Samoyed, and the lovely clean outline of the Shetland sheep dog, and the Pembroke Corgi there. So I think we're going Don't to see them anything. moving again. Want to see any of these breeds up close and Just personally? Visit the Discover Dogs area. Walking up from behind the dogs to look at the hind quarters and perhaps the rib cage. 
He would move each one, of course, again. So they're not just going to take another look. He's going to get them to move in each case. So here we see the Australian watching it from directly behind, which he hasn't had the chance to do before. Again, this clean, long stride. They're working dogs. They should be able to cover the ground efficiently and with the economy of stride, holding its level top line. Very different type of movement in this, in the, in this Belgian Shepherd dog. It's brisker, shorter. Yes, I'm very fond of the Belgian... Uh, Shepherd dogs. The Belgian Shepherd dog turban. 7520. Sir Buren, the fourth variety you saw today. And the next dog we see to move is the Border Collie. And enjoying itself <laughs> immensely uh, in the ring. Here's the Border Collie. This is, this is going very well and looking very well. So uh, I think it's in with a good shout here. Six year old dog, this one. Getting the dog Round balanced he before he sets the off. The Collie, best of breed, 7602. It's dropping the head low and stealthy in its movement. Now Ron Yolda moves on to the Marama Sheepdog. This, of course, is Alby, just two years, six Seven months four, old, this dog. The breed the fell out of favour in this two. country and uh, lost their championship status. However, it's coming back. And this one, coming from to, to win from abroad, is a good example to set for the quality of the breed. This is a dog which has faced wolves on the Italian mountains. It's actually done so. Roberto Palazzi has told the story. So, fit for function. Fit for function. Fit for life. Yeah, this is going well, this Polish Lowland Sheepdog. Compact and cobby. The dog. Little five year old dog, this one called Hero. And round the Polish Lowland. House dog goes. that loves Take life. And now here goes the Samoyed. The Samoyed. Sent forward by Andrew. Six year old bitch, this one called Judge Charlene. Charlene. Bitch from, eight, from Lisbon eight, in Portugal, zero. as Frank said earlier. The handler is Daria Chosna da Silva. It's in uh, wonderful condition and bloom and very alert in its showmanship. So around the range at the end of the line is the best of breed Samoyed 8980. They always put on a good show, the Samoids. And now we and see the Shetland Sheepdog. Now the little Shetland Sheepdog, the Sheltie. Four-year-old bitch, uh, four-year-old dog. This one called Howie. Top Shetland Sheepdog last year. The movement of the Shetland Sheepdog should always look light and effortless. And it became top uh, Shetland Sheepdog in just three months of showing last year. Beautiful carriage. And the last of the eight in the shortlist. Breed, the, the, Pembroke the, Welsh Corgi. the Pembroke Welsh Corgi. This is Magnus, a five and a half year old dog. A best in show winner and multi group winner and breed record holder for the Pembroke Corgis now. It's a lovely so line. The the end of the line goes and very interesting. Corgi. Nice to see the Morella out there. Nice to see the Polish Lowland out there. Very interesting to see. Where is he going to go? Where with he's them? going to yes. go with his choice. The boards are coming out, so he's made his decision. So as the award boards come, come out into the main main ring, and Judge Rodney Yolden has another look along the line before he makes that all important decision. This is a big, important decision, and a lovely one for Rodney Oldham to have to make. 
I mean, another good look. He's Winner of the past will go to Now, it's he's the picked the Samoyed. Charlie, six years old. It's a breed he's very familiar with, so he will have judged very harshly on this one. He, he yeah. knows what really good ones look like, and he's picked it. The Belgian Shepherd and, got oh, and it's the, the Taburan takes group two. That's a very good win for the breed. It's very nice pitch. And, and third the place, it's the high. Border Collies coming the to border third border place. Seven, six, well, they were all splendid dogs, but this is very nice to see. This is Digger. Irish champion in multi champion. And in fourth place is the Australian Shepherd. Australian Shepherd gets a shout as well. This breed growing in popularity. This is Mark. I'm going to congratulate the other four shortlisted breeds. I'm going to ask you also to show your appreciation. But there is our winner, the Samoy. The smiling Samoy with something to smile about. This beautiful pigmentation and dark eyes. Very alert. Owned by Festro and Miguel Do Silva Briso. David Chosner Do Silva is showing, uh, showing the uh, pitch here today. Thank you very much. Lovely six year old Samoyed. Nice little cur curtsy from the handler. Very delighted to win this at Crufts. It's the show which carries prestige worldwide. So they all want to win here. And she has. And we're told that Charlene is an absolute queen at home. True show dog, which enjoys every minute in the ring. A true friend, an amazing companion dog.